be out here expecting the blessings of Jesus when you won't even have him be your shepherd, child. No. Hello, everybody. What is good? You are tuned into the Abide Podcast with your girl, Misha Solanga. Listen, I'm so excited to be back with another episode of the Psalm 23 Breakdown, child. That is what's up. If you had not listened to last week's episode, I'm going to need you to just take a breather. I'm going to need you to pause this, you know, podcast episode or this YouTube video, depending on where you're watching it from, and go back. Yeah, go back and watch the first episode of the Psalm 23 Breakdown because it'll give you so much more context to what we're trying to achieve in today's episode. Now, last week I spoke about the first verse of Psalm 23. Um, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, I shall not lack, I shall not be in need. Come on, somebody. Um, Then I kind of broke it down, you know, the Holy Spirit leading me. Now we are chatting about verse 2, okay? Verse 2. Two. Now, for the benefit of those who are watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe, <laughs> to like, to comment, um, and you know, hit the notification bell so that you know when I put out some more content. You know, it's literally that simple. And on my Spotify, on my podcast listeners, um, thank you again for tuning in. If you have not followed me or subscribed to me on YouTube, do the right thing. Thank you. <laughs> so today we are jumping into verse 2 of Psalms 23. Okay. And we all know it. Ne? But I think, I believe rather, that God is moving us into a place and a time and a season where we don't just know. Where we don't just cognitively know his word. Head knowledge know his word. But that we actually know that it's within us that you know how king david says i will write your 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 words in the tablet of my heart type of a situation that his word is internalized that his word becomes every fiber of our being you know that kind of a thing that's where god wants to take us and i think that's why he's even leading me to do these kinds of breakdowns to actually help people understand the significance and the nuances that are hidden in his word. Because we take it for granted that something you've been reciting since you were in primary school, you, you don't realize the depth that it holds. Okay, so let's let's stop reading the word of God as just a pastime or as just I have to tick a box. You know, I've had my quiet time today and actually be intentional. Be, be investigative in your, in your reading, in your study of the Bible. Okay. Because again, there's so much in there. I always say there is so much more that God has in store for us. If only we would dare to scratch the surface. So today we're going into verse two and verse two obviously says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures and he leads me besides the still waters. So King David continues this illustration or this symbolism that he used in the first verse where he he shows us that God is his shepherd and that he is a sheep in the flock of God, right? With the relationship established, and this is something that I spoke extensively about in the previous episode about the relationship that he establishes and how we as believers also have to establish relationship, okay? It's not just with your personal life, with your friends and your boyfriends and your girlfriends and your, "Hmm, no, where you're like, "Mm, I don't know what we're doing. What are we doing? You need, God is asking you that question. What are we doing, sir? You not defining your relationship and saying, okay, God, you are my Lord and my God. Don't be out here expecting the blessings of Jesus when you won't even have him be your shepherd child no so define that relationship like King David does in verse 1 he says the Lord is my shepherd I shall not be in want right um he continues to go on about God being the good shepherd and how you know everything that I said in the previous video I'm just trying to give you a recap now we're getting into verse 2 where he says he makes me to lie down another version will say he leads me ne What he's communicating here is that King David says as a sheep and God as his shepherd, God makes him, enables him, allows him to lie down. What does that mean? God allows King David, God allows us to rest. And the the importance of it even saying, if you you make me is because in my own capacity, I would just keep going. In my own capacity, I'm all about the hustle because hustle culture and it's we're hustling, we're making things happen for ourselves when God is like, no, 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 I need to make you lie down, right? So we need to get to that place and that point where 
where God truly is our shepherd and he makes us lie down or he leads us to a place where we are resting because we're doing so much. Yo, we're doing so much. And listen, I'm not hating on anyone who's doing a lot. I was doing a lot. I was doing the most. <laughs> and God, God literally had to recall me. You know how if a company is selling a product and something is wrong or defective with the product, what they do, they recall. Or even if it's not defective, maybe it's just no longer. They know, for example, with iPhones um, or even any phone, they will sell it for a certain time. And then by the time, maybe three years later, you want to go back and buy that phone. And they're like, we don't make those phones anymore. We recall that you have to get with the new stuff or keep it moving. And it's kind of similar with God in that sometimes he'll call you in a season where you have to do a lot. And sometimes he'll be like, okay, I need you to rest now right? I need you to rest. And, and, and majority of the time, it's not necessarily God calling us to do the most. Um, it's us seeking to do the most so that we can say we're doing the most, right? But obviously I'm, I'm the bad Christian. I'm the one who was trying to do my own thing, try to fulfill my selfish ambitions and trying to be that chick, right? Y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all are holy. Y'all are good. Anyway. (laughs) So In our day and age, and like I said, in our time, we're so busy in our society. God is communicating when we say this scripture that he wants to bring us to a place of rest. King David, think about King David. He was a young king. You know, he had so much going on. He was either being chased by Saul or he was fighting wars or he was hiding in caves. There was always something going on. But in the midst of everything that was going on with King David, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. A, I shall not be in want. B, He's going to make me lie down. He's going to make me rest in the midst of it all. So I think the big thing right now is that we need to come to a point where we're like, God, I want your rest. Can I just? Because there's so much going on. We find ourselves overwhelmed. We find ourselves riddled with anxiety. You know, we find ourselves, even in some people can't even sleep. You can't rest because you're here. Because we're just so busy trying to get things done. And we forget that we have a Lord. We have a shepherd who already knows the way that he's planned for us. For those of you who've never heard the scripture, go read Ephesians 2.10. He says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So why do we put this pressure on ourselves to do all of this amazing work, to start all of these businesses, to to, to work in all of these huge companies, to drive this car, to have that ministry, to do this, to do this. Rest. Because if it will, if it must happen, God will make it happen because he predestined it in eternity. Take that pressure off yourself. I, I, I will testify. I will speak my truth because God always leads me into these places and in these seasons and in these moments where I have to expose myself for the benefit of others, where I started a company, you know, at his behest, at his instruction, but then I started running in a direction that, that wasn't fulfilling the purpose that he had called me for. So what did he have to do? He had to be like, I need you to pause because you missed the memo. You forgot why I called you to do this. And he had to reconfigure and redirect me to, you know how, you know how if you, if you're driving on Google maps or on whatever, and, and you turn in the wrong way, it says rerouting. Sometimes God has to reroute you because you've decided to run in your own direction and forget what he's called you to do. You forget that he had predestined everything that you are going to do on this earth. And in your own mind with your selfish ambition, you've decided this is the the course i want to do because it's going to make me rich this is what i want to go work as because i'm going to make more money neglecting what god has called you to do and i oh right anyway we're neither here nor there we work so hard you know to 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 see and do and make things happen that god has already predestined it's just a matter of us being obedient and resting in him and because he's a good shepherd what is he going to do what does a shepherd do a shepherd leads his sheep where they must go He leads his sheep where they must be. When we realize this and internalize it, because it's one thing to read it, see it, hear Misha say it, but when you internalize the fact that he is your Lord, that your Lord directs you, if you give him the opportunity to, that he guides you, if you submit your life to him, then we will be able to go where he leads us and experience this rest. You could be working in the most demanding, high pressure environment, but you'll be moving from a point of rest because God led you to it. Right? 
When God leads us into spaces, it won't be sorrowful because the Bible teaches us and tells us that the blessing of the Lord addeth no sorrow and maketh rich. What God gives you, prospers you, doesn't make you anxious, doesn't confuse you, doesn't create chaos. So investigate your life. Where are you? What's going on? No, what's going on for real? What's going on in your life that you've taken on that's bringing confusion, anxiety, you know, lack of sleep, like you're so busy that you're not allowing God to be Lord over your life because you're chasing things. When he says, I'm your Lord, I want to make you lie down in green pastures, but you're not giving me the chance. Hey, anyway, he says, this is, this is King David in Psalm 23 verse two. He says, he leads me or makes me lie down in green pastures and quiet waters. Let's break this down again. This shows us provision and comfort. Listen, God wants you to have a soft life. That's okay. Ne? But is soft life got that God is not like soft life that you see on Instagram because we have this misconception. You're about we need to we need to equate the world and god these are two separate things the bible tells us that the things of the spirit don't make sense to people who are carnal because they are things of the spirit i could be listen i say i'm living a soft life even though right now technically i'm self employed and i don't have a steady income but jonga i live my best life because i know that my god will provide okay I have a beautiful car that I love. It's not a Maserati. It's not a Mercedes Benz, but it's mine. I can afford it. That's provision. I'm not killing myself. I'm not hustling hard so I can drive a Mercedes. Or I can, I, no, no, no shade to anyone driving. Like I'm just making an example about myself. If you're driving a Mercedes and you can afford to, and it's not causing you stress and you can pay your apartment on time and you're not hustling hard, you're moving from a point of rest. Great. But if you're in a position where you're acquiring all of these things and they're not bringing you peace, they're not bringing you rest, you need to question if they're a blessing from God. Because the Bible says that the blessing of God addeth no sorrow and maketh rich. It brings prosperity. Prosperity in the Bible is not just about money. Forget what these other people are teaching out there in the world about prosperity gospel, that it's all about you being rich. It's more than just financial wealth. It's about mental health. It's about, it's about, it's about peace it's about joy it's about hope it's about love abounding in all of these things relationships abounding just overall health that is prosperity it's not just financial okay so move out of that mindset not to say that god doesn't want to bless you financially he will if you're faithful moving on swiftly so jesus wants to provide for you he wants to provide for you and trust that when he provides for you it's in abundance right and it don't stop why do i say this Green pastures. If he leads the sheep in green pastures, sheep need good grass to, to nourish them. That's what they eat. And they say they're herbivores. They don't eat nyama. So their need is satisfied to eat in grass. Jesus, King David says, he leads me to green pastures, not a patch of grass that's small and that's limited, that's going to finish if I eat it once. He leads me to greener pastures. This is rolling hills, fields and fields of green, healthy, nutritious grass. Let's bring it back to our human context. God wants to give you, he will give you everything you need in abundance and it won't stop. Why do I say it won't stop? He says there, he leads me, not he led me. The psalmist here, King David speaks in the present tense. The things of God, it's a rhema word. It's like, it's, it's now. It's living and active now. It didn't stop and end in the time of David. It's now. He leads me continuously in every season, in every time. He continues to lead me. Right? He leads me to greener pastures and quiet waters. It doesn't, his provision doesn't stop. But it's only if this provision, this leading is contingent on him being your Lord, being your shepherd. Remember I spoke about defining the relationship. You can't expect this provision. You can't expect this leading. You can't expect this continued provision of uh, an abundance if he's not your Lord. He has no obligation to provide for you if you're not the sheep in his fold. That don't make no sense. Right? Any a parent, a parent has no obligation to provide for a kid that's not their own. They might do it from the goodness of their heart, but their provision is reserved, is reserved for their own. 
And I'm not going to get into how you can determine if you are Jesus' own. Go read John 1, child. Anyway, let's keep it moving. <laughs> I be getting passionate, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But what we're getting into is that God doesn't lead his sheep to subpar grasses and, and, and rapids. There's, there's a significance here, guys. Oh, this is so good. There's a significance in the greener pastures. And I said that God will not lead you to subpar opportunities. When it's from God, it'll be good. And you won't have to lift a finger for it. Once he brings it, you'll have to work, of course, and prove your, you know, study to prove yourself approved and do the right things. You have to study. You, if, if, if he does allow you to go to that university, you have to give your all in studying. If he does, you know, bring you a job opportunity, you have to be faithful in that job. Right? And, and, and if God, listen, he, when he brings an opportunity, it's good. When he brings you a job, it's good. Sometimes you, you don't even have to lift a finger to get it. I've, be, I've experienced this. I've experienced the goodness of the Lord in this day and in this age. And I know people who've experienced, who've gotten, I've had a situation where I've gotten a job without even applying for it. Multiple actually. Because they locate you. The blessing and the favor of God finds you. Because remember, he said in Ephesians 2, he predestined in eternity all the good works that you are going to do. So if you would just rest and allow God to be God, you will experience the green pastures. What is the significance of the quiet waters? The quiet waters and the rivers and streams. Now, in context of sheep, a shepherd wouldn't lead his sheep to rough waters because when they're drinking, remember, sheep drink head down. And if the water's moving fast, they could suffocate because their nose is right, like we are, right by their mouth. It could go up the nose. They could get disoriented, fall into the water and be carried away by the rapids. But what does Jesus do? He doesn't bring you things that are going to overwhelm you. He doesn't bring you opportunities. He doesn't bring you, he doesn't take you to places that are going to kill you. He brings you into places that are peaceful, that are quiet, that are restful. The theme here is that everything he brings you allows you to rest. His provision comes in a form of rest. You must rest because the enemy wants you rushing. The enemy wants you running because when you're running fast, you have no time to hear the voice of God. When you're moving fast, you have no time to enjoy the stillness, the still voice of God. So Jesus leads to quiet waters. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He cares enough to make sure that the grass is green and plentiful. It's not subpar. It's not brown. It doesn't have patches of brown. Imagine green rolling hills and a nice quiet stream of water everything a sheep needs is there everything you will ever need god will bring you to oh you ain't gotta hustle you ain't gotta grind you ain't gotta secure nothing my father whose riches abound psalm 24 tells me that the earth is the lord's and everything in it and if i am his child best believe i have access to everything my father has access to Keep it moving. Even with everything that God brings to us, it leads us to be in alignment with his word. If the opportunity takes you out of alignment with the word of God, it moves you away from that, from that peace. It moves you away from joy. It moves you away from health mentally. You know, you're anxious. If it contradicts the word of God, you've got to do some introspection. I'm not telling you to make any decisions, but I'm saying you've got to think and you've got to pray. You've got to think and you've got to pray. Where God provides, it'll never take you outside of his will. If God provides it, it'll never force you to compromise your relationship with him. Ne? Cool. These opportunities, especially with hustle culture, guys. I don't know. I think God is just trying to address something with us, especially with how much we're putting out. Again, nothing wrong with it, but make sure it's coming from God. Because if you do something out of your own strength, out of your own might, you have to sustain it. And when it starts overwhelming you, then you want to call on God, forgetting that he didn't tell you to do that. Ne? So when you're a sheep in Jesus' flock, you don't have to hustle. You don't have to grind. And that's something that I had to learn the hard way. 
through countless months of frustration, countless months of wondering, God, why is my company not taking off? I feel like we're doing amazing. Why is my company not, what's, what's going on, God? And he's like, I gave you the idea, but you moved away from me. You forgot. You forgot that you don't have to hustle. You don't have to beg because I'm going to bring it to you on a platter. Everything you need for this company to succeed because it's from me, I will succeed it. All you have to be is be obedient to whatever I tell you to do within the scope of that company. And whatever job you're doing, okay, we work hard and we hustle and we toil and we strive and we break our back because ultimately it's like we don't trust him to be our shepherd, to be our Lord, to be good to us, right? But remember, as I'm literally just wrapping up this session, this, why am I saying a session? Sorry, guys. I'm so used to teaching like um, sessions and youth and stuff. Um, but as I wrap up this episode, what I believe the Holy Spirit is, com- is com- communicating to us is that when we're a sheep, we don't have to hustle. We don't have to strive because God will bring us everything we need to live an abundant life in the right time. What we do need to do is change our perspective. Stop seeing things in the perspective of the world, but receive them in the perspective of God see things from them like you know how the Bible says put on the mind of Christ because when you put on the mind of Christ you'll have a perspective of Christ you'll have a perspective of Christ and you'll find yourself less and less inclined to want to have things to 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 to, to fulfill the desires of the world or to be able to post Uhuri, I also have this ne? so let's let's change our perspective Because the reason we're never satisfied and always feel like we're lacking things is because we're looking through the lens of the flesh. But when we look through the eyes of the spirit, we will be able to see, and I said this in the previous episode, we'll be able to see that God has given us everything we need. He has given us everything we need and he will continue to give us everything we need as his children. That is it for this episode of the Psalm 23 breakdown. That was episode two so verse two of the breakdown um i thank you very much for tuning in thank you so much and i hope you learned something please make sure if you're on youtube comment engage with me tell me what you thought about this what was your favorite part what did the holy spirit tell you you know what 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 came up for you um in this in this specific episode if you are my spotify thank you so much for listening make sure you follow if you're on apple Podcasts, follow so that you can get the next episode as well next week all my love guys for the benefit of those on youtube please make sure to subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell like comment do the right thing share with your friends whatever it is that the holy spirit leads you to do do it (laughs) but from your girl misha so long it's time to say goodbye